50 years ago, two guys walked into a British pub and announced the meaning of life. It's been elevated to the status of an iconic discovery. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code, the sequence. Welcome to Secrets of the Sequence. I'm Lucky Severson. There's a big jubilee coming up this year, 2003, the 50th anniversary of the discovery of the structure of DNA. It's important to point out that it was not the discovery of DNA. It was already known in 1953 that DNA was a genetic stuff that carried the heritable traits from parents to their offspring, but no one knew how. Two young scientists working at the University of Cambridge in England figured it out. American James Watson and Englishman Francis Crick connected many smaller discoveries and built their famous model, the DNA molecule. Since DNA was known, what was it about the structure of DNA that was so important? And where would we be today if it was still a mystery? The nature of discovery by Watson and Crick was really, in a way, putting together information that came from X-ray crystallographers, from biochemists who had uh, found that there are these four bases in a certain, in a certain relation, in a certain um, 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 frequency with each other, and putting this together and come to this really very beautiful model of um, how DNA looks like. So I think it was a very important, very imaginative way of putting data together, coming up with something which immediately explained how inheritance works on a molecular level. The structure of the DNA molecule, the formation of a double helix, was key because it answered an old question, and that was how could the hereditary material be duplicated? How could one cell pass its hereditary material to two cells with great fidelity and in complete form? What the DNA double helix suggested, and uh, Watson and Crick remarked on it, a famous closing sentence, it has not escaped our notice, that the double helix immediately suggested a mechanism for its own duplication. My own work is directed towards understanding the genetic basis of cancer. And it turns out that cancer, as I suggest, is a genetic disease in the sense that very often it's the result of creating flaws in DNA. And these flaws that occur, or mutations that occur, are chemical alterations in the structure of DNA. Without knowing the structure of DNA, and without knowing from that structure, now a lot of the mechanism by which DNA is replicated and ac accurately and corrected, if not replicated accurately, it would be a great mystery. Certainly our ability to study DNA markers across the human genome and to identify which ones track with certain diseases would be completely absent. And as a result, we would not be able to discover the genes that underlie disease. And we would not be able to right now be looking forward to a future in which we will be able to treat the causes of disease much more effectively than we can today because of these genetic discoveries. We're interested in how genes function or misfunction when a cell develops into a cancer cell or when an organism um, develops a major disease. It's all based on genes when they don't function normally, incorrectly. So without having a access or without knowing how the genes look like, how their DNA looks like, or how they function, or what their sequences are, or I mean, how many genes are there, I think we would be possibly like a visitor to a foreign major million people metropole city without having a map and you're asked to find the station or you're asked to find where the mayor's office is or you're asked to find where your friend lives 
be pretty hopeless. If somehow or other the structure had been very, very different, and uh, uh, which is sort of like saying, well, you know, if gravity weren't there, what would you know space travel be like? But um, and we're not talking about an invention which you know where there could have been alternative solutions you know if, if the internal combustion engine hadn't been developed maybe electric power or steam power or some other thing but this is uh, basically a, a bedrock of all biology so it's hard to imagine how it could have been different and how it could not have been discovered if you try and rate the great discoveries of of mankind, at least in science. It's a little bit like rating baseball players. Is Barry Bonds really better than Babe Ruth? I don't know. But having said that, if you try and rate the discoveries, the scientific discoveries, I think the discovery of the structure of DNA has to be up there with Newton's laws and the invention of the calculus, the periodic table, the discovery of Darwin's laws. These are major discoveries, Einstein and nuclear physics in the early part of the 20th century. Some discoveries are great discoveries because they're great intellectual jumps. Some are great discoveries because they have tremendous practical implications. Some are great discoveries because the person did it all by themselves without any help. Um, but I think that this is a great discovery, first and foremost because of the importance of heredity. And heredity is one of the most puzzling, characteristic, and important aspects of life. So certainly on the level of importance, it would have to be rated very high. It's been elevated to the status of an iconic discovery. I think it largely deserves that reputation. It's become the point uh, around which all of DNA research is viewed historically. Um, now, of course, before the discovery of the DNA double helix, it was already well known that DNA was the hereditary material, and afterwards would come the understanding of the genetic code. We're talking about DNA is a fundamental genetic chemical or virtually universal. That's a big discovery because it touches all of biology. The structure of DNA touches almost all of biology. The discovery of the genetic code touches all of biology. Those are really high points and I wouldn't call them simply, although they are steps, they are gigantic steps. I think if we hadn't discovered the structure of DNA, people would still be arguing about how similar are different groups of people who happen to live in different parts of the world, or how similar are human beings to different animals. And my guess, given the way a lot of people's minds work, is people might have focused on the differences, cataloging people and animals based on subtle differences. When you look at the DNA, what it tells you is we're all the same, except for these incredibly trivial differences. It, the incredible unity of the DNA, I think, is perhaps a message that resonates even beyond the science that life occurred once on the planet we're all the children of those original organisms and we probably should behave that way the secrets of the sequence teaching materials were developed at virginia commonwealth university with funding from the national academy of sciences and the pfizer foundation the original public television series secrets of the sequence was produced by ward television with funding from pfizer the pfizer foundation Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board, consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.